Good evening, everyone. I'm Danny Mando, and welcome to another Federation of Jewish Men's Club cooking webinar. We're very excited to uh, invite you and have you join us this evening. Um, so tonight, we have a personal friend of mine, Scott Kadish. And Scott uh, is actually not an FJMC member yet, soon. He's actually exactly what we want. Someone who is unaffiliated that started to watch these webinars and thought, ah, oh, these are great. So Scott's watched a lot of the cooking webinars and uh, the sports webinars. And he said to me, hey, I do one of those. Well, you know what happens when you volunteer at FJMC. You're you get told. <laughs> you are hooked in. So um, Scott, um, I wrote it down. Scott comes from the very prestigious cooking school of Ecole de Kaddish. <laughs> it's a holy cooking school. Actually, no, he's a financial advisor and he just loves to cook and he's taken up, um, he's taken up becoming a vegetarian and a, a aspiring vegan. So what we're gonna do is without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Scott and we're gonna blow up his screen and you'll be able to see him. So Scott, take it away. Thank you, Danny, and thanks for the opportunity. Just everybody to mute. Yourself. And everybody please mute. Um, Am I and on you mute? Can, uh, not you. We don't want you to be on mute. Thank you, Tom. Tom is the mute patrol for me. And we'll take your questions through the chat. So any questions you might have, and we would encourage you to have them, put them in the chat, please. All right. Well, th well thanks, everybody. And thanks, Danny, for having me on here. This was a fun uh, thing I wanted to try. And uh, just a, briefly about me and my cooking history, really, like so many people during COVID that maybe took on new hobbies or activities, changed jobs. Uh, for me, I don't know what happened, but I kind of got the cooking bug and it happened about a Passover too, when I just decided to take the reins. Normally my wife, Stacy does more of the cooking and I just kind of took over and I didn't stop. Uh, so here I am uh, with a uh, vegan barbecue presentation. Um, just a little bit about my background. I, I haven't always been, uh, I'm, I'm an aspiring vegan. And uh, unlike for those New Yorkers out there, this uh, I know Eric Adams went out there. I'm not like Eric Adams. I, well, I am in the respect that I do eat fish occasionally and I have eaten meat uh, during the high holidays, but I do lean vegan and I, I do try to eat as much uh, vegan as I can. So uh, tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about just a standard barbecue, except instead of with your hamburgers and your, uh, your sausages or beef hot dogs, we're going to be making, uh, we're going to be doing it with the plant-based stuff. Um, so the first thing you, you got to know about um, when you buy the, the, the plant-based sausage uh, or, or burgers is that it generally comes frozen. So the first thing you have to do is you have to defrost. Uh, for those of you who used to buy fresh, you know, it does get a little take uh, getting used to, but uh, it's definitely worth it if you're someone like me who hasn't eaten red meat uh, for years. And so the, the definitely the difference, uh, the taste is, is certainly a lot closer uh, of, the, of the new plant-based meat, such as Beyond Beef or the Impossible Burger than, uh, than some of the other stuff that's been out there for a while, like the Boca Burger and, and um, Morningstar and there's a bu bunch of other brands. So first thing you got to know is you, it needs to defrost overnight. So this is what the package looks like. A lot of you probably have seen it. Maybe you've cooked at it. Um, yeah. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna zoom in. My my daughter's telling me to zoom in. So that's the package. And two of the links I've defrosted. I'm gonna be cooking them shortly. But you can see um, Beyond Meat is one of the main uh, plant-based brands that is really, you know, when they came out, they used science to really make things taste, look, feel uh, like real beef. Um, so that's what we're going to be cooking with tonight, the plant-based sausage links. Uh, there are three, three different kinds. You've got your sweet Italian, you've got your hot, 
and your mild. I, I like the sweet Italian. Uh, the other one we're going to be cooking with is the, the plant-based Beyond Beef Burger. Now, this is a really cool box. They, they initially came out in just packs of two um, that you could buy. Many of you have seen them. This is actually something you can get at a lot of places like your warehouses, your Wegmans. Uh, um, I even got this at Market Basket for those of you who live in the Northeast. Um, just because, you know, uh, one thing that I like about the plant base is it's available pretty much everywhere. It's not just about going to Whole Foods or some of the more upscale, you can get them anywhere. So that's good. So this comes in a box of eight. This is a nice like little value pack and they come all like prepackaged and stuff. I'll take one out. It's a nice hefty burger. Cooks up really nice. So you get eight of these in a box and you know, I keep it, you freeze it. And then, like I said, the night before, if you're gonna grill, you, um, you just defrost how many you're gonna go with. So those are the stars of the show tonight. Um, a lot of the other stuff that I'm gonna be making people know, and it's more about, oh, I will say there is one other thing that's a little bit different. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. That's our dessert. Uh, and just a couple of the things that Danny might've said this already in the chat, uh, I put a link to all the recipes. Um, so if you want to take them, and I also put my email in there too. So you can uh, email me if you have any questions or anything like that. Okay. So, you know, th those are the main things. I'm also, uh, I'm going to make, um, of course, to go along with the sausages, you got to have onions and mushrooms. Uh, it harkens me back to the day at Fenway Park, just those wonderful smells and sounds of going with my dad or my family to the game and walking. And for those of you who've been to a ball game, you know exactly what I'm talking about, all those wonderful smells. And I, I did eat many sausages for many years, but then again, I became more, um, I became kosher and um, also vegetarian. So I really miss that. So this is um, this kind of a reclaiming of that, that feeling that I had many, many a time going to the ball game at Fenway Park where I am in Boston. So we're going to make, we're going to make some peppers, onions, and my family's a big mushroom family. So we're going to basically, um, I got some portobello mushrooms. We're going to cook these up and we're going to put, um, we're going to do a nice blend. Um, we're gonna, uh, I'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, you got your classic condiments, you know, you need your sub, you know, this is a nice big sub roll. Matter of fact, it's so big that um, you got to really cut the sausage in half. I mean, the, 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 the sausages are three ounces, about 190 calories. It's a pretty big sausage, but um, it, it um, what I do is I'll, you know, if I want to eat the whole roll, some of you maybe only want to eat half the roll, you'll you'll, um, uh, you know, you can cut it in half. And then I got my nice, my nice bun. Uh, again, I'm trying to, you know, replicate the actual regular burger. Um, we're going to use that. And then we've got our, you know, our traditional condiments. We've got uh, lettuce, Boston lettuce. We've got some Vidalia onion, uh, vine ripened tomatoes and so forth. Um, so, so that's the, um, so we've got the sausage, we've got the hamburgers, we've got the stuff to put on the sausage. And then um, we're gonna make also sweet potato fries. Uh, and um, I love, we're gonna grill them on the grill. Um, I'm a big fan of sweet potatoes. Um, I don't know, it's a great, not only is it a great color to complement the other foods on the plate, but it tastes really nice. It's loaded with good things vitamin A, vitamin C, it's really good for you. So we're gonna make some grilled fries. And then uh, we got Brussels sprouts too. Um, I like, you know, the Brussels sprouts are kind of the, you know, just a nice compliment. It's a nice vegetable, it's healthy. We're gonna roast them. Now you can do everything on the barbecue. Um, I'm not gonna do um, the Brussels sprouts, just the size of my gr uh, grill and the time limit. I'm going to roast the Brussels sprouts and I'm going to, I have for dessert, uh, I have vegan s'mores. Uh, we're going to take 
um, some vegan chocolate. And I had to look, this is really an interesting thing because a lot of chocolate technically is vegan, but if you look at the back, a lot of them, a lot of the brands will still say it's kosher dairy. Um, these are actually, these two brands that I found both at Wegmans today are, they're Parv. And for those of you maybe on here who don't, I don't know who's on exactly, but just a Parv means it's like neutral, it's not meat or milk. And these are actually uh, those, because um, of the, I see the Hexer, um, it says par. well, this one says par. this one actually doesn't. Um, so it's possible this one actually could have milk in it. But for me, um, I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy this. We've got our kosher marshmallows. Again, these um, are parv um, yum. These are really delicious. I got these in Wegmans. The bet, there's another uh, Trader Joe's, and we, I don't know, many of you probably shop at Trader Joe's. Um, they it could be the same actual ma marshmallow because we, you know, you can go in there and you see that there's a lot of. Trader Joe's stuff that looks exactly like the, the normal label brand. So I wouldn't be surprised, but Trader Joe's, and these are called dandies, and they are vegan. And then of course, we've got our vegan graham crackers, par graham crackers. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through um, just a little bit of the preparation. Um, what, we're, what we're gonna do here is, um, uh, I already prepared um, the sweet potato fries a little bit, but I am going to show you a thing about how to cut the potato, right? So the thing of, with the potato is that, um, you know, I, and I boiled these in advance. You want to boil them about 10 to 15 minutes uh, until they're a little soft on the outside, but still hard on the inside. Um, and then once you do that, you're going to cut the potato in half like this. And um, if, if it's hot, if it's uh, been boiled long enough, the skin should peel right off like that. And then get the, see it peels right off nice. Maybe you got some little, let's take out the uh, little eyes or whatever those are, get those out. All right, and now we're gonna cut the fries. It says one third inch. You know, I just, the key I think is uh, making them long enough they don't fall through the grates. And you can see there is a little bit of resistance. I also so I wanna make sure that I cut them not too thin, but you know, maybe a third, a quarter inch or so. And then we got, we got that. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this. Cut those up using a, you know, I just sharpened this knife. It's amazing how much I've learned in the past two years. I didn't even know what a knife sharpener was. I never had one. Now I have one. I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna put them. I cut the other two potatoes, use two to three potatoes. Here's what it looks like. And um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some olive oil. This is one of the keys to my cookout is we're gonna add about two tablespoons or so of olive oil. And then we got the secret blend. It's not that secret, it's right on the recipe, but it's a combination of brown sugar, salt. Uh, so about one tablespoon of brown sugar. And again, I'm, I go a little bit more mild on the salt. And then we've got a little cayenne pepper. I do like a kick. Everybody in my family isn't like that. So I, I'm pretty tame with that but if you can put more cayenne pepper and it'll give it a, a nice kick. So we poured all that in, we got the olive oil, covered it. We got the brown sugar and the cayenne pepper and we're just gonna mix that around and get, get everything coated nice. Whoop, the fry got away. And that's, um, and that's our sweet potato fries. So those are, those are ready to go. I did preheat the grill already. Gonna get it up to like four, 450. So um, I think we're pretty much ready to go because I, I, um, I have 
pre I already prepared the um, uh, the Brussels sprouts, and I prepared the mushrooms, uh, uh, onions, and peppers. So, but I what my real focus on, and I think a lot of you are probably like, for those of you who never cooked with plant based meats, how does this cook? I, I put on the my notes. I think one of the things with um, cooking uh, the meat. I mean, while it has fat and it has the right texture. And um, sometimes I find it sticks to the grill a little bit more. So I, I also pre-oiled the grill to prevent some of the sticking. Same thing with the fries. So what we're gonna do now, and um, we are going to head on downstairs. My kitchen's up on the second floor. We're gonna go outside and we're gonna go downstairs and walk outside to the grill. And we're gonna do a little grilling together, all right? dogs are out. I got the grill. If you go right up to it, it's right around 500 degrees. So it's nice and ready to roll. I'm going to go ahead and crack that open. And uh, what we're going to do first. Now, the thing with the burgers and stuff, I made burgers two different ways. Um, there's another way that the burgers come. They come in a, 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 a one pound container. So what I do is I'll, you know, you'll hit, make them from hand. And what I've read is that actually the ones that are a little fatter, they they'll they should cook a little bit more and keep the juices in. So if you're really into, you know, getting the maximum out of your plant-based burger, you might want to buy the the one-pound pack, defrost it, and then make your own burgers. A little they're a little thicker. So I'm gonna we're gonna put them on the grill, and we're also gonna put we got the sausages right here. The nice plant-based sausage. We're going to throw that down, and I also have, I also have from that value pack box. I've got a couple there. Put that, and last, we get the fries. I'm going to lay them right across the grid, like this. It already smells good. I like that. It's got that nice caramelly looking, almost like. I don't know, like uh, sweet potato, sweet potato pie that we make during so many of the Jewish holidays, so many of my Jewish holidays, Rosh Hashanah, um, Passover. It's one of my favorite things. And ironically, oops, that one got away. And yeah, it's funny. We're also, I'm also, we're doing the s'mores for dessert. Like I said, if you have a fire pit, um, you can grill those, you know, toast those marshmallows. I've even, with my kids, I've even barbecued. I've used the barbecue. Uh, again, for simplicity tonight, just for, so you can see what they actually look like. We're running out of real estate here. We're gonna get these on. And uh, this is uh, three, three potatoes. Really makes, it's amazing how, how many French fries I got here? Two, two small potatoes and one probably a large one. And I am just a huge fan of sweet potato fries. Okay, all right. So let me close the grill, let's see what we're at. And this is the part, oh, uh-oh, put that away, all right. And um, I'm gonna let the grill heat back up. And uh, these cook pretty quick, um, six to eight minutes, three minutes. It says three minutes on each side for the burgers and about six minutes or so um, for the sausages. The fries, again, they about six minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, uh, just, uh, wait about three minutes or three and a half minutes and we're gonna flip everything over. So um, at this point, um, everyone has been so captivated. Uh, I, I hope uh, everyone's having fun. Are there any questions while uh, we're waiting for the grill to heat back up about the burgers or anything like that? So I have a few in the chat here for you, Scott. Hold okay. on, give me, give me a minute while I go up to the uh, top. So my daughter, Michelle, wants you to know that these are great products and she can confirm. 
She is a vegetarian herself. Uh, I have a request for you to come to our regional retreat. So we'll talk offline about that. <laughs> you just got Marty apparently very excited by your um, enthusiasm. Um, so a question, does anyone make gluten-free sub rolls? Okay, you got me. I wish I knew more about gluten-free. I actually have, we were actually at a gluten-free Passover Seder. I wish I had the Feldmans uh, next to me. Uh, yeah, Daphne smiling a little bit, the inside joke, but um, the, uh, yeah, the Feldmans had a gluten-free Seder. They would know uh, in two seconds. I, unfortunately, I'm sorry. I, I'm guessing they do, but I can find out and get back to you if you want to send me your email. I'll check. Yeah. With the well, you can send it to me and I can send it to Scott. Not a problem. Great. And my, my son has celiac, so we would be also very interested in that. Yeah. Um, Schmierling's chocolate makes a par of chocolate and just came out with a vegan almond milk chocolate. So that was a comment. Uh, okay, so one of our uh, FJMC members who's actually done two of these himself, Larry, wants you to know that the chocolate, or everyone to know chocolate, may be marked kosher dairy if it is made on the same equipment as milk chocolate products. So that is um, right. So officially, yeah, it takes some hunting to find the parb one. And I, if you guys, I'll send you that one. That one specifically says parb right on it. Um, but yeah, I, I yeah, that, that's a, thank you for adding that in. And on the chat, by the way, is the, are all the uh, ingredients tonight, folks. So if you didn't get it through the uh, you were supposed to get it, but in case you didn't, it is on the chat. You can click that on. Um, so from uh, another one of our FJMC uh, members, and actually Carl, who's in charge of all these webinars, he would like to know what flame height do you use? Flame height? Yes. Wow. Uh, that is a good question. Uh, let's take a peek. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I think... Um... I try to keep um, a relatively low flame. I think it's time to flip these two. And as you can see, I did pre-oil. Uh, we got a nice, um, nice thing there going. Nice grill marks. Um, you can see some of the, the coconut oil, which is the main source of fat in the, uh, in the Beyond Beef, has dripped, whoops, has dripped and, um, it's caused a little bit of a fire, um, but that like I could learn. I don't know if the um, whoops, if the uh, Jew the Jewish Men's Club has um, a barbecue group, but I uh, I wouldn't say I'm a like a barbecue. You know, I barbecue all the time, but I, I like to do it in the summer. Um, I like um, definitely around the holidays, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day. You know, it's just a fun thing to do. I wouldn't say I'm a grilling expert though. So, but um, I'm curious. I'm always curious. So, so we can see the nice grill marks it made. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think those burgers look pretty. I mean, you can tell the ones that I made by hand. The ones that came in the box actually look pretty darn good too um they really look nice and now i'm just going to flip the fries and we're going to get these probably get these off the grill and about as soon as i can flip them almost um it is a little time consuming as you can see there's probably for those of you bar um i just took this recipe from the internet and i made it about five times but um i'm sure there's like a basket you can put these in and you don't have to go through the painstaking turning over of each fry, but hey, it's, you know, there's something about barbecuing and the smells it's just, it's nice to be out here. It's not too cold tonight. I don't know where everyone else is in the rest of the, the world, but it's, it's, um, it's May in, uh, in New England, so. It's freezing. What are you talking about? 
I know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just, you know, I'm. It's cold. The, it's 400 degrees right here, so it's <laughs> like I have a, I have a campfire right here, Danny. You're right. I would be standing out here if I wasn't grilling. Um, yeah, we're doing pretty nice here. Uh, I love when I can make something. You know, we have a joke in our family. I'll cook. We'll all sit down. We'll eat. And I'll say to everybody, okay, I think I made a really good meal tonight, or maybe I made a stinker, you know, and I'll know if it's really good. We're just going to close this for another minute or two. I'll know if it's really good if they give it the RQ. The RQ stands for restaurant quality. So I'm always aspiring to do that. And these fries, I've made them a couple of times. They're really good. I think I think one of my my, my daughter said that it was uh, restaurant quality. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's great. So Scott, yeah. question for you: Did you put any seasonings in your burgers? Um, I did not. I think uh, if you read the ingredients, um, I didn't put them in the um, the recipes. But I, I almost there's links. Um, there's a ton of like pretty amazing stuff in there. Like you'd be surprised there's apple and um, I think there's beets and just some really neat things in there and some spices. Uh, I've tried, um, I tried putting some onions in and um, kind of in, infusing it with some barbecue sauce. Oh, that's one thing. I, I was gonna bring some pineapple and grilled pineapple on there, but oh well. But um, some barbecue sauce, um, and I tried infusing it, and um, uh, the burger didn't cook that well. Um, so I, I, I kind of stick with what I know and what what has turned out the best. But um, you know, I, I haven't I haven't super experimented. I'm not. I read an article. This guy, this professional cook in in California, really went went to school with the with the plant based meat. He made like a shawarma on a, ro on a ro rotating thing and he, this 15 pound block of meat, he cooked it and he tried to, he started shaving it, right? He started shaving the meat and it was falling off really nice. Then something happened with the chemical reaction of the way the, the meat bonded and the whole thing basically fell off the, the shawarma, you know, the, ro the rotisserie. So, but it was interesting. Um, you know, I think it's a it's a work in progress. Since I bought the Beyond Beef the first time, they've they've come out with a new improved version. So I think it's something. You know, I know with grass fed beef and other kinds, I'm sure there's different kinds of beef, organic, that have different tastes. I think similarly, I'm sure they'll have different versions eventually, and they will add spices. But I I think it's still a pretty nascent. Um, the plant based industry uh, is pretty pretty nascent and um, not um, is still tremendous uh, growth to go. I will say one more thing, and then then I think we're we're probably good to go. It's looking really good. I'm, um, I have a question. I have a few more questions for you, though, Scott. Yeah, you're not off the hook here. Are Bye. the Beyond Beef Cookout Classics the same size as regular burgers? Oh, these things are these things are bodacious. Uh, I am. I don't know <laughs> if I can. Like the ones that came in the campfire versus the ones that I made by hand, like these things are, um, you know, not not for the feeble of heart. I'm just, uh, it's, it says four ounces, but this thing is um, about an inch thick, four inches around. It's 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 really a, a nice burger. Someone's Danny. not muted. Someone is not yeah, muted. Me, Danny, me, Phil. Yeah. I want to tell you that the, the box are the same size, the weight, but they're not quite as large. That's how they make the difference up there with thicker. Ah, Thank very you. Good. Thank you. So I'm just, uh, these things have definitely cooked up. Like I said, um, I also brought a thermometer down. Why don't we just, um, I'm going to let these fries cook a little bit more. On the packaging, it says, I mean, I, I don't, I usually, don't use the thermometer that much, but let's just see what we got for a burger temp. It says 165. I don't know if you can read that. It's going up pretty fast. It's up to one. What is it, Daph? 150, 160. 160. All right. So we're good. It says you want to cook to an internal temperature of 165, and we hit 165. So we're good there. So that's good. 
And then what we're gonna do, let's just grab these fries, take them off the grill and let's head back upstairs. So one of our um, very funny regional members here, <laughs> I like his comment. He, uh, the first time he ever ate an, improve, uh, an impossible burger, uh, he thought it was disgusting. But now he's tried the new version and he was impressed. And that would be Mr. Kaplan from the New England region. <laughs> right, the, the new version. I don't know about you, but I, when, when the, I hadn't had a Whopper in like 20 years. Plus, I just I wasn't a big fast food person, but the, the day that the Whopper was available near my house, and I asked my, my family too, I'm like, hey, does anybody want a Whopper? They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get the Impossible Burger with all the, uh, you know, their secret sauce. And I'll tell you, it was so good. And again, it's just a matter of I haven't eaten red meat in, in, a, in quite a while. So um, it was really fun. And uh, Russian dressing's a nice, uh, nice topping. I have that upstairs. Uh, any other um, thoughts, questions? I think, you, I think your friend Joe wants to know if you deliver. Uh, we're, we're thinking about that. We're uh, <laughs> a kosher grub hub. Although uh, I would not say this grill is kosher because I, I do, um, I'm not strictly kosher and, um, and my wife likes uh, red meat. So we cook it all here. We're an equal opportunity barbecue family. All right. All right, let's head back upstairs. We've got the yummy, yumminess. Let's just turn off the gas. Probably a good and, idea. And uh, let's head back up. One of our um, our Connecticut guys, Phil, he was traveling up here last week and he stopped and had an impossible Whopper and he thought it was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> it is pretty good. I mean, I don't think, you know, for those of you who really like red meat, I, it's it probably, I don't know. It, 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 I don't want to say it doesn't compare, but it's still a, a bit ways off. You know, I, I although I don't, I'm not really one to comment. But for those of you who've tried both, you know, you, there's still a difference. All right. So here we are, back up at the uh, at the t now we're in the tasting lab mode. Um, what we're going to do to kind of to wrap things up. And that is our dog uh, Gilligan, who's who's twelve years old, and um, he is trying to get up the stairs. If you hear some, we're not torturing our dog; he's just trying to get upstairs. And um, I'm going to go grab the Brussels sprouts, which I've I just kept heat in the oven. I love Brussels sprouts, and um, you know they're a nice side. They're just have a lot of flavor if you like Brussels sprouts and green vegetables. Um, and um, I just want to show you what my roasted Brussels sprouts look like. I don't know, can you, is that good? So, and that's what the Brussels sprouts. So we've got the sweet potato fries, we've got our, our burgers and our sausages. Um, and um, now it's time to make the burger and then try it. And uh, last but not least, we're going to have um, s'mores for dessert. I also, oh, before, I just want to put a plug in. I did bring this in intentionally. I don't know if anybody's seen this before. Uh, I love to use uh, um, things that take less time. This is crushed garlic. It's actually Israeli. Uh, you can get this in Trader Joe's and Wegmans. They make uh, basil, and it's basically these little frozen tabs. I've used them all, but um, I don't know if anyone's cooked with these before, but they're really cool, a great, a great innovation from Israel. I don't know if they invented them, but but yeah, that's what I used to for garlic. Just wanted to plug that is. They also make great. ginger. They make, thank you. All right, so. I didn't know that, that was on the chat. 
<laughs> oh, and I wanted to show you this. This I was um, I cooked in advance, but this is the um, sautéed uh, onions, Vidalia onions, green pepper, and portobello mushrooms with some olive oil and Italian seasoning and a little bit of pepper. So what we're going to do is we're going to assemble this, and first I'll. Uh, Take the uh, sausage. As I said, that's one big uh, that's one big roll I have there. I don't know if you can see that roll, but that's a big roll. So I'm going to just cut this in half. Something I noticed about the Beyond Beef, you know, it's only been like three minutes. I'm not sure scientifically, but. I'm touching the, the inside of the sausage. You saw that it was 165, at least the burger. I'm touching the sausage. I don't know if there's some kind of property, but it seems to me that I'm um, just putting all the nice topping on. It seems to me that it, it cools faster. So just if you're serving guests who are vegan or whatever, just be aware that you got once you get it off the grill, you know, it, it seems to lose heat a little faster. I don't know why that is. And I, I haven't, it's not a scientific experiment I've run. So and then finally, I love mustard. I'm gonna throw a little bit of that yellow mustard on there. Yum, yum. That looks amazing. Look at this. Look at that sausage. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Um, I'm gonna take a bite. It's Cause I didn't eat dinner yet. I would be really cranky. Marty's on the go. He would be comatose. He had an eat by 8.38 at night. Okay. And um, so with the fries, I wanted to assemble the plate, like to show everybody the plate, how nice it looks with all the colors and stuff. And uh, normally I would have serving spoons, you know, if we we're at the table, it would be, um, a little bit more, but I just want to I want to show you the burger too. And I want so we'll do a close up because I think the burger is very impressive. Whoop. Almost lost a graham cracker, but we didn't. All right. So we got, you know, we got the burger here, which is just a beautiful thing. We've got um, the tomato, a little onion. Uh, we don't want that onion that went in the salt. Let's put a little onion there and a little bit of lettuce. This one I might have to pick, I'm gonna have to pick up with my hand and scrunch. Okay, and we'll you're my friend. Off. It's okay. We'll top it off a la Burger King with Ken's. For those of you, who, I, Ken's is a national brand, but their headquarters is about 10 minutes from my house. They have the most ginormous building it's it's like as big as an Amazon warehouse, and that's where they think they make a lot of their dressings. So I went and the last night I stole some dressing from there. No, I, di I didn't steal dressing, but um, so I put a little Russian dressing in, and I don't know if you guys can see that, but that looks like a pretty nice burger to me. I, I don't think I can get my mouth around that thing. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to squish it down, and I'm not gonna cut it. I'm just gonna just eat it up and see if I can get my mouth around it. Mm. So good. Guess what, everybody? For leftovers, there are two dogs that are directly below my feet. So there will be, I don't have to worry about, no, I'm not gonna feed them leftovers, but, and um, so this is the meal. We got the, Italian sausage, we've got the Brussels sprouts, the, the burger, the sweet potato fries, which nice, they have nice grilling. Mm, that was good. Brussels sprouts. Last but not least, um, let's do the s'mores. So, crack open. I'm gonna use the, um, this is the one I'm going to do. You can see the close up. I don't know if you can see it, but this one actually says carb versus the other one does say made on with dairy ingredients. I'm just going to crack this open. And 
Now, um, I, I tried some of these bars. I had, um, there's an endangered species one that I had that was made with oat milk. Again, it was, it was dairy, but it was, um, it was super delicious. Uh, I tried that. So uh, we're gonna just take, I'm just gonna bring over the, uh, my tray. I put some uh, lined paper, lined um, parchment paper, and got, we got our graham crackers. We're just gonna line some, some of this. I even got the cameraman who's now, she's eating a little bit because she's like, oh my gosh, that looks good. Uh, the chocolate's definitely dark. I mean, if you like milk chocolate, you can use uh, Hershey's. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna top it off with our marshmallows, kosher. Now I will tell a secret. Um, these are actually, I bought these, these are the Grammys version of the marshmallows. So they are, while I did show you um, vegan, um, these are kosher or Passover. I had some left over and uh, they do contain fish gelatin. But like I said, I'm, I'm not Eric Adams for those New Yorkers who get that joke. And I'm just gonna take these, looks nice and yummy. I'm just gonna pop them in the oven for like a minute. And, um, you know, any other questions? Well, before I show you the final dessert and... So we have, um, let's see. So Carl says, check out Game Changer film on Netflix. Fascinating piece on meat versus vegan diet and how the athletes perform. And he wants to know, dude, that looks awesome. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Larry Larry agrees that anything you drop on the floor will be good for your dogs to pick up oh, yeah. for you, except don't drop the chocolate. Not good for dogs. Absolutely. We know that. I've done it. That's why it was very uh, <laughs> fortunately tough. Yeah, we've all been there. The hospital is less than ten minute drive from our house. Great, great. Although now we have a wing named after us because we've been there so much. <laughs> Not to joke, oh, joke, but, uh, um, all right. Well, it really doesn't take a lot. They're on. It's on broil. These things toast up. I'm gonna just take them out right now. It's like a minute. And these look awesome. Um, this shouldn't be too hot. I don't know if you can see those, but we get the total toasty, you got the melted chocolate, that beautiful, I don't know, some people like their marshmallows burned, but I like them like nice and brown like that. And then we're just gonna squish down. These will go, these will be disappeared by, whoop, these will be disappeared by tomorrow, magically. I don't know where they'll go. Scott, if you provide your address, another one of my uh, partners and buddies on the call is David Kravitz. He, yep. lives in, he lives in Worcester, he'll come over and he'll eat for you. He'll take it. <laughs> okay. So there you have it. That's it. We got our s'mores and um, oh my gosh, I gotta, you know, the thing of it is with these s'mores, they're gonna drip, but hey, there's just something about summer and s'more, you know? <laughs> All right. Well, Danny, I want to thank you. No, thank you. That was terrific. That was a great, great job, Scott. Uh, every everyone really enjoyed it. They want you to be the next regional president of New England region. You even well, joined I knew, FJMC. I knew was a yeah, right. So it was a terrific well, presentation. Interested. That was a great program. Thank you so so much, and thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we don't do enough of the cooking ones, so we're glad that we we got that in. And um, 
We encourage you all to continue to participate. Um, we have a sports webinar coming up at the uh, end of this month. Um, and you'll hear more about that. Um, and then I'm sure we'll try to get another cooking one in uh, over the next few weeks. And for those of you in New England, we look forward to seeing you the second weekend in June at Camp Ramah in Palmer. And for everyone, we look forward to seeing you in a little more than a year in Philadelphia for our 2023 convention. And this will be for real this time uh, at the downtown Marriott. So uh, lots of good stuff. And by then, Scott, you'll be raring to go. So thank you. It's a great, great example of someone who really wasn't that familiar with FJMC. I told him about the webinars, thought it was great. Why don't I do one myself? And we were very, very impressed. You did a really, really good job. So yes, to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we'll see you again next time. Take care. Good night, everyone.